Well, I really do think that uh, my baskets are known for the mathematics involved with them. And I spent almost 20 years as a school psychologist. So I think it's a natural progression that my baskets would become mathematically based, since in my other life I did a lot with math and statistics. But um, I was weaving this wonderful twill pattern, and I just thought it looked good, it felt really good to uh, create this uh, pattern that I was doing. And I was at a show much like uh, the Smithsonian Craft Show, and a math guy came up and said, well, that's Fibonacci. And I said, what's Fibonacci? So a lot of my baskets, I've done the pattern or the sequence or the numbers or the ratios or whatever, and then have uh, physicists or mathematicians tell me what it is I see in my work. So then I went back and learned what it was I was doing. Uh, but they're, they're very uh, methodical. They're based on a 13th century uh, math uh, sequence that Fibonacci discovered and it occurs uh, throughout nature. It explains the proportions that occur in the spirals of seashells and pine cones and flower petals. And I started incorporating those numbers or the sequence of proportions in my baskets. And at first it was just a simple spiral like you might see in a chamber nautilus. And then I started playing with zigging and zagging the spirals and learned that I was creating fractals and logarithmic and Archimedes spirals. And um, it was more what people saw in the math that I was doing that they would relate to. Um, and then recently, um, as a result of a fellowship, I've begun pursuing chaos theory, which is the total opposite of the very ordered, predictable baskets that I do. And my husband has lovingly said that I found a way to make a living with my compulsiveness. But with chaos, um, I can still play with the numbers, but I can mix them up. But they're still very mathematical. It's quite obvious that there's symmetry and proportion to them. This is um, probably one of the better examples of how I use the Fibonacci numbers. But going horizontally, uh, the uprights in a basket are, gonna, are called uh, spokes or stakes. And I weave over a stake, under one, over two, under three. And I just keep repeating the under one, over one, under two, over three, all the way up the basket. But the Fibonacci sequence, um, and the only thing you need to remember is one, one. And if you can remember that, you've got it made, because one plus one is two, two plus one is three, and each new number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. So it goes one, one, two, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34. So this basket, I weave one to the right, one to the left, two to the right, three, five, eight, 13, 21, 34. So that between each zig and zag is the golden mean or the golden ratio. And mathematically, that's one to 1.618. And that's just sort of a magic number. It's been held to the highest aesthetic since ancient Greece. Michelangelo, Da Vinci, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright used it in their architecture and their art, Bartok and his music. As far as I know, I'm the only basket maker that knowingly and purposefully uses the number, but it just creates a very pleasing design because it comes straight from nature.